let's go over what to prune certain things. And we can do this across the street. Maybe it's, it's easier here with the notepads already out. Um, between now and the middle of March, so you got to, well, by the end of March, let's say by, the, by April, things are it's so full on spring, the sap is flowing, you really need to prune before that. So from the new year to about the middle of March, the sap is still cold, it's, it's not quite flowing. You can make a cut and the sap it won't bleed out, especially for, for pines, maples. They're notorious for crying about their pruning. They just always throw off sap. So if you prune in midwinter, not going to have that problem. So I would say most of your, your shade trees, most of your pine, spruce, cedar, your junipers, I prune between now and middle of March. Okay? Hedgerows. Be careful of that one. Red tip botinias, arbovita, uh, boxwoods, some things that you, you shape and trim back a lot. I wait on those until I push it towards the end. I like to prune those in the month of March. This is personal preference. You can do it in January, no problem. But if it's a big plant that's real aggressive, it has this butchered look when you get done. So you can see all the woody ends. It just looks beat up. And I don't want my landscape to look beat up very long. I know they're going to start flushing new growth probably the end of March, April. So I wait to prune right before then. So I'm waiting till the first part of March. Then I'll do that heavy cutting on, let's say, red tip plutinia is probably the number one. I'll wait to cut back that. I'll fertilize it right afterwards. And just within a few weeks, I'll start flushing new growth. You can have a little rough patch for a couple of weeks. But then it starts to flush new growth, gets that new, it looks, looks fine. If you prune it back in March, it's going to look that way until, until spring hits. And all of a sudden, you'll start to flush and cover up. That's just my personal preference. You'll, you'll read all kinds of stuff on the internet. If you do a search how to prune, you'll hear all kinds of crazy stuff. For the mountains of Arizona, that's kind of probably a better, better way to approach it. And then the biggest mistake I find newbies make, especially folks from California, uh, maybe in the desert area, Scottsdale, Tucson. Be careful of your spring bloomers. Don't prune off. Don't prune yet. Lilacs, forsythia, camellias, quince, all the things that bloom first in spring. Uh, those things, if, if you prune them back, it doesn't hurt them, but you lose all the flowers. They've been setting flowers since last summer. They've been setting the buds. They're about to bloom in the next month. I mean. Here's a camellia right here. It's been blooming for two months already. If you start cutting this thing back, if you start cutting, shaping it, and it needs to be shaped, but you'll cut off all these flower buds. For spring bloomers, this is important. You want to take this down, this note down. Prune spring bloomers after the flowers, the last flowers dropped. So I know it'll, it'll be green. I know it feels like it's a little late. It's fine. Enjoy the flowers first, then prune them back. So, okay, the summer bloomers, don't worry about them. Rose of Sharon's, your crepe myrtles, your, your, all your sage, salvias, the Russian sages, all those, turn those back now. They're, they're not even interested in spring. They like summer. They're going to be growing and blooming in summer. Uh, grapes, prune now. Because people will start calling going, I think it's dead. Because it wakes up so late, it doesn't, it, it doesn't care for spring. It's waiting for warm weather. Great myrtles the same way. It waits. Uh, desert willows, it waits until summer, until it's warm. It wants to be May. It'll be May before it even leaves out. You'll swear it's dead, but it's just waiting until it's good. Go ahead and prune it back now, shape it while you can see the structure. Once it starts getting leaves, it starts getting harder because you can't quite see where all the branches are. Okay? Um, so, Wait on your, 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 basically your spring bloomers, just wait. It's the most, most important thing. Fruit trees, go ahead and prune them back. Figs, to grapes, to apples and pears, prune them all back. Uh, let's cover it before we walk. Yeah, we'll cover it here, just perennials. Those plants that come back every year from their original root structure, those plants you can prune back right now. And usually I'm a weed whacker, lawnmower guy. Butcher them, just walk, just cut them back. Ornamental grasses, fast, easy, it should not take you very much time, just go for it. Um, big grasses like pampas grass, we'll have a good example of that, we'll show you how to do that. That one's 
too big, you can't take a lawnmower over it, you might take a riding mower. <laughs> and I know, probably that's a little too much. But most grasses, you can cut back pretty dramatically. It'll hurt you a little bit. But even mums, let's say mums right now, you'll cut those back and you'll start to see a little green shoot starting to come up. Okay? So it's, it's kind of time. Just as you get time, turn them back. I do weight myself on my roses. This is School of Hard Knocks, okay? I once pruned back, I lived in, our, our family grew up in Skull Valley, uh, range country is at 4,200 feet. That's where the ran, that's where the farm was. Okay? You'd think it'd be a little bit warmer. I thought so. I'm gonna cut back my roses now. And then, a, then a cold front came, and my perfect form, three branches down to knee high, it was perfect. I had sprayed it with dormant oil. It was perfect, ready, fertilized them. Ready to come on with spring. They were starting to push off a little new growth. Then a cold front came and snapped those things back and killed back the canes back to the graft. I thought I had lost them. It took me a year to catch up and grow back. My roses, I keep the structure on those until the month of March. I want, I want the hips on there, the old uh, rose hips. That helps to, the plant can feed off of that get it through a harsh winter, the extra structure over top of that, that, that cane or where the cane, the graft comes out, helps protect and insulate. So I wait, I let winter beat those up. We get another month or so of, it can be brutal. It'll be nice today and then it gets cold tomorrow. Kind of like last week. That'll last for another month. And then March comes and it's pretty nice out. We might get some snow but it melts instantly, and it, but it's just nice out. It just feels better. The plants start taking off. You can, you'll tell them the met, um, uh, daffodils will start to bloom, the, the, the jasmines and heaths, this little boy here. This guy just starts blooming like crazy. Um, it's just March, March, kind of spring happens here in the mountains in the month of March. So I wait till then, when I know that most of the cold is done, then I start pruning my roses. That's just school hard knocks again. So while we're on hard knocks, can I show you my, my people think this is a grass. Oh, you're, you're poor landscapers. They're such idiots. I wish they were smarter, but they owned a pickup truck and a shovel, and they just started their own business. But they don't know how to prune this. It just drives me crazy. They cut this thing back and shape it like a grass. This is a yucca. It's made, it's evergreen. It's made to come back. If you prune this thing back and shape it, like a, like a grass, it will take years for this to come back. They do whole subdivisions by cutting them and shaping them. And this this thing should not be pruned. Cut back that long stalk. Remember, it has this, this one has a big red flower or yellow um, that floats above this foliage. You can cut that stem back, but don't cut the foliage. Oh, don't let your landscape maintenance guy do that to you. It's just oh, it's so painful when I see that happen. And then when you fertilize these, let's say like this, this is a century plant or agave. This is the one that puts that ginormous uh, flower on that grows like 12 feet tall. You can watch it grow every, I mean, when it blooms, it just, it's just fascinating. Be careful, you see how the structure, this thing brings all the water into its core, into the center part of this, this plant. That's why it's so drought hardy. But when you fertilize, make sure you don't get fertilizer on the petals, where it will bring all the fertilizer in to the inside of the core, and you'll burn the heart of this plant. I've seen that mistake. Just some schools, some quickie on the fly. I just don't want you to make those kind of mistakes like I've made, or have seen made. So watch that one. So anyway, same thing with these. These guys bring your yuccas. I'm real careful by hand. I'll, I'll sprinkle it underneath, around the edges. That's how I fertilize these. They do need fertilizer. They will green up better and bloom stronger for you if you're fertilizing them with that all-purpose plant food. But I just make sure I don't have it sprinkled on top. Okay. What else we got up here? Here's a good example. Before we start talking. This is uh, Oregon grape. It's great native for here. You can see it's loaded with flowers. It's just this thing's within a Within a few weeks, the first next warm day, this thing will start to bloom. It's a February, March bloom. It's an evergreen. It's well evergreen and purple. This is this is its winter color, then it will green up to be this color here, that color. As soon as we get warm, it will start to change. 
but it needs to be shaped. This looks a little, needs a haircut. This one I will wait till it blooms, enjoy the flowers, and then I will take the pruning shears to it and, sh and shape it after that. Enjoy the flowers first, then go ahead and prune it back. That's why I brought this one up. This one I brought up because you'll see right on the edges here, some winter burn, some, just some winter damage. And it's very likely you'll see that in your yard. Um, I'll wait until probably March to prune this, this hedge. This is a boxwood. I would say euonymus, junipers, all, all these hedgy, evergreeny, kind of broadleaf evergreen things. I would wait until March to prune that off so that I take all this, this old spent or damaged, winter damage, and then I'll shape it up. And then I'll fertilize, it'll just flush new growth. And you'll never know that it was ever pruned back and, and damaged. If I prune it back now, like I really want to, we could get a cold snap in the next month. It'll cost more of that. And by the time you get done, you're left with this nub of the landscape. So just kind of watch. If we're not done it, it'll fool you. If you're, this is your first season here. Um, and you know who you are. You're probably the ones with the shorts. You got a light vest on. You know, you think this is such warm weather, and we're, the locals are in parkas, and, and uh, we're thinking it's really cold. You're just new from the Midwest. It fools you. It'll trick you into thinking spring is here. We don't gently start to go into spring like, like other parts of the country. We violently go into spring. It's nice, really nice, and it's blizzard conditions. Really nice, and it's, we do this thing. So it'll give you a couple false launches. I can tell you that our last frost date is May 8th. Mother's Day is what the locals use as a, as a last frost date. So we're likely to have a cold snap. It'll be quick, but it can take out your tomatoes you're tempted to plant in the first part of April. It'll take those out because it felt warm, and it was for two, three weeks, and then all of a sudden that one last hurrah comes in. This will be important for fruit trees. If you plant the wrong fruit tree, and it, the, our spring tricks it into blooming too early, all of a sudden you'll find those desert varieties that are so prominent up here, they never form fruit because they, they're the wrong variety for up here. They grow, they do fine, but they never set fruit because they bloom too early. The fr last frost takes out the fruit, the blossoms, or the setting fruit. It's just kind of some things to watch. Do your homework when you do that. Come and ask us. We'd love to help folks with gardening. Really, we do.